Good morning. I'm uh, Ali Emdad. Um, I'm the associate dean at the Graves uh, School of Business in Management at Morgan State University in Baltimore. Um, also the uh, founder and executive uh, director of the National FinTech Center, or the Center for the Study of Blockchain and Financial Technology, for short, we call it the FinTech Center. Uh, today's uh, session is a little bit different from all the other sessions that you've attended. It's not technical, it's, it's more social and understanding of the landscape uh, from the perspective uh, that we have in the US. Uh, maybe different in other parts of the world, but uh, my experience and my uh, data is all related to the US. Uh, a little bit of uh, data also came from the UK, and uh, just uh, for reference for myself. Um, and uh, let me tell you what the approach is that I've here. Uh, uh, the go back to a jump. Okay. Okay. The uh, data that um, I found were mostly from the venture capital um, area and the problems uh, and possible ways uh, to, begin the, um, to begin addressing the issue of diversity. Um, then uh, we, we talk about uh, what role HBCUs can play in um, diversifying uh, the workforce and uh, also at the end, I'll bring in an example of uh, uh, one of the universities and the type of activities that uh, have been going on. In the um, talk, um, I'll rely on data from uh, different sources, um, and uh, the sources are a little bit uh, the, I tried on purpose not to go into the scholarly uh, articles and instead uh, whatever was available from uh, various sources. By, and uh, by uh, nature, you'll find uh, that uh, the data may have some nuances and it may be from source to source you get different kind of uh, statistics. Um, the, if we look at uh, the historical uh, context, uh, minorities and uh, specifically blacks have been locked out of the financial and credit building uh, opportunities. And uh, as a result, uh, they're far more likely to uh, lack uh, uh, credit histories and high scores that are required in order to uh, to accomplish uh, uh, one of the most pr uh, prized goals in everybody's life, owning a house or a car. And uh, that has been an issue for uh, the underrepresented minorities and uh, what we call the unbanked uh, or underbanked communities. Uh, if uh, and it is uh, important to notice that if uh, uh, FinTech fails to address the issues uh, that um, uh, are related to diversity, it will um, also uh, be doomed to repeat the same uh, mistakes and failures uh, that uh, it tries to, to address. Uh, the legacy financial systems have uh, locked out uh, many of these underrepresented uh, uh, groups. So uh, looking at uh, some the landscape of uh, fintech, uh, about 15 percent 
of overall uh, tech employment is in fintech. And the total number of African Americans uh, that are executives in fintech is less than 2%. And uh, in, in terms of the broader professional community, uh, the um, African-American uh, African representation is uh, fewer than 5.3%. Uh, Chris Brommer, a professor of law at uh, Georgetown University, uh, did a study and came up with these numbers um, that were also reported by other sources. So um, looking at the uh, blacks and, historic, uh, and Hispanics uh, in the certified financial planning uh, industry, uh, out of 87,000 certified uh, professionals, only 3.8% of them are uh, are blacks and Hispanics. That's a drastic uh, uh, number that we can, uh, we can cite. In, in terms of data collection differences and nuances, you find it in, uh, in many sources. Uh, and uh, I found that, for instance, uh, Slack had minorities at, uh, in 13 percent of all uh, positions and 6% in uh, leadership positions. Uh, Google and Facebook had less than 4% uh, of their technical positions filled by uh, underrepresented minorities. In uh, the, the, uh, the, the problem that the uh, fintech industry is uh, facing is uh, that um, in general um, it's uh, it's like uh, you say the people that are building the products don't look like the people that they try to serve uh, which simply means that they don't understand what their needs are and uh, that's one of the problems uh, lack of understanding of um, uh, the market that you're trying to serve. Uh, so as a result, this uh, leads to uh, issues. Uh, very few women and racial minorities are among the fintech founders. Uh, and uh, diverse groups uh, of people are needed to develop uh, solutions that improve the financial health for all. Um, the <coughs> selection biases are evident when there is a lack of representation uh, from women and specific racial groups among uh, VC uh, partners. Uh, it's uh, cited also that VC firms with no female partners uh, invest in companies with women CEOs three times less uh, frequently than VC firms with female partners uh, uh, in the uh, firm. Fewer than 10% of uh, partners at VC firms are women. Uh, and also, 2% uh, or fewer VC partners are black. So these are, these are drastic uh, uh, statistics and eye-opening in, in terms of uh, the lack of diversity in these, um, in these uh, areas. By adding diverse voices uh, to the conversation, the industry can begin to address the lack of diversity. And uh, uh, diversity, once it's increased, it also uh, advances financial health. Um, the the uh, gender gap, race gap uh, in the access to uh, STEM education is another um, area that uh, is cited as 
the root cause of some of the diversity issues. Uh, another, another interesting um, uh, information is that VCs value uh, in network intros uh, for new funding opportunities uh, for the startups. Women and minorities, on the other hand, are not as easily let into the network, uh, and uh, this is a catch-22. How, how do you get into this uh, uh, system when it's closed? And uh, so we need, uh, again, there is a need for uh, finding ways uh, to break that cycle. Uh, we also find that mentors and sponsors in companies that, that have um, uh, recruited uh, minorities, uh, that mentorship and sponsorship of uh, these new recru recruits is extremely important. Uh, and, uh, but at the same time, we find that 46% uh, of uh, men, men are 46% more likely to have mentors and sponsors than women. Uh, and uh, Caucasians are 63% more likely to have sponsored than professionals of color. Um, the um, Women and minorities have, have traditionally faced uh, obstacles uh, in starting up uh, funding. And uh, VC firms typically do not understand uh, the uh, markets that the emerging minority community is trying to, uh, minority entrepreneurs are trying to reach. And uh, the absence of this diverse leadership in a way has uh, trickled down and infected the uh, rule making and supervision at uh, these different, uh, different financial uh, companies. So where, where are some of the sources? Where can you find the workforce uh, that uh, would bring in um, uh, some diversity into uh, into these uh, companies. Um, while uh, the financial companies are, are saying that well-qualified black candidates for the positions are not easily found, uh, the data shows that there are um, uh, universities are producing uh, graduates uh, with degrees in computer science, in finance, in economics, that can be uh, attracted to these uh, companies. For instance, 9% of uh, graduates um, in computer and information systems were black. Many, many historically college, uh, colleges and uh, universities or HBCUs uh, produce the largest number of African Americans uh, that are that can be absorbed by these companies, and many large companies have realized uh, the opportunities, and especially after the uh, the killing of George Floyd in 2020, uh, many companies started paying more attention in uh, recruiting. Uh, uh, black uh, and minorities uh, into their companies. Um, and we believe that uh, the HBCUs are a rich source for uh, workforce development and uh, training for uh, financial, the financial industry and specifically for the fintech industry. And it's uh, obvious that uh, fintech companies can, uh, can have a great uh, impact. Um, but we need 
to think about it in a different way, um, the new generation of leaders need to, uh, to emerge that uh, they understand uh, what, uh, what needs to be done to, uh, to diversify uh, the workforce and also in a way disrupt uh, the, uh, the big uh, legacy financial systems. And uh, this, is, this is another uh, um, issue that many companies uh, keep talking about uh, uh, we need uh, a, a diversity um, is related to the talent pool and we need to focus on talent pool but it's not uh, just simply a talent pool it's the issue is beyond uh, beyond that it needs uh, to be addressed accordingly how do you how do you accomplish that though um, we need to uh, foster, for instance, uh, uh, an inclusive env environment in the, in the company, in the firm, uh, and develop uh, plans uh, that not only recruit uh, from the entry level, but also from the top. So you need executives that understand uh, that uh, diversity is needed in the executive suite but also entry-level positions need to be coming in. Uh, once you recruit uh, the entry-level positions, then um, a plan should be in place so that uh, they are nurtured and uh, guided to succeed, not to be left alone. Many of these uh, new uh, recruits uh, probably need to understand the culture of the organization more than anything else. And uh, so in the minority community uh, and the HBCU community, for instance, there is uh, uh, this um, apprehension that if you go work for this company, you probably, after six, seven months, uh, you're going to fail and you're going to leave the company. So there is a uh, feeling uh, that needs to be um, uh, understood and also worked uh, and uh, planned uh, according to that, uh, have uh, uh, some uh, meaningful plans uh, to, to make them grow and succeed. Um, we need to consider, for instance, uh, we talk about uh, the, uh, the, these universities <clears throat> all together have about uh, 300,000 students. And these students are diverse in their majors, in their areas of uh, uh, study, uh, like any other university. And they're very, very successful. Some of the, if you sample some of the graduates of uh, HBCUs, for instance, in the US, uh, Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the U.S., graduated from a historically black college, uh, Howard University, and uh, four-star generals in the military are also uh, from some of these. Some uh, top uh, financial um, uh, leader executives came from HBCUs, but they're far um, from uh, a dominant uh, kind of uh, picture. These are uh, examples that uh, the HBCUs can produce uh, the uh, workforce that uh, excel and, and can be leaders um, at the national and global scene. The CEO of uh, Ken Chenault was the CEO of American Express came from uh, that kind of background. So we have, we have a lot of uh, information uh, on, on these, uh, but at the same time, we need, we need uh, to find uh, reliable uh, sources of data collection to, so that the companies can, can understand the landscape uh, better and understand where they can, they can go to uh, collect information and uh, have 
and uh, we, we have access to uh, reliable uh, sources and uh, data. Uh, let me uh, give you an example of uh, one of these uh, historically black colleges and universities is Morgan State University. I've been working at Morgan for a long time. I worked at uh, uh, North Carolina, went to Penn State from large uh, predominantly white universities. I went to uh, this tiny university, but now it has about 9,000 students. And, uh, and I have been um, fortunate to, to uh, work at the university where I, I was given a, a lot of freedom to create programs, departments, um, created the Department of Information Systems in uh, 1993 and uh, and in uh, over the years uh, very very innovative programs were added uh, and in 2018 we created the center uh, the national center for uh, the study of blockchain and financial technology or fintech our our goal was uh, to educate not only the university community in uh, something that is evolving, growing, and we wanted to also train the students to get into the workforce with better understanding of what, uh, what these technologies are. Cryptocurrency, cybersecurity, um, data analytics, um, all of these are important things that um, the students need to understand. So we, at the, uh, uh, the National FinTech Center, we created, uh, uh, the, the mission was uh, to also serve as a hub for all the other HBCUs. There are 103 HBCUs in the country, and uh, we serve all of them. Uh, more than 60 universities regularly come to our events as a result of our activities, and uh, we, uh, we try to, again, every time we have a program, our goal is to, to make sure that uh, uh, the, the students come, the faculty come, and uh, we do the training and we do the educational activities on uh, that basis. We are fortunate to receive funding uh, from Ripple in uh, 2019. 2019, we got uh, uh, we got money, uh, multi-year, multi-million dollar grant from Ripple uh, that um, created the uh, the energy that we needed in order to reach out to as many universities as we could, and uh, uh, we became part of. You see. You, Ripple is, is kind of unique in, in their approach. They, they reached out, they created a structure where uh, uh, currently there are some 44 universities uh, part of their system or network. They created uh, the um, University Blockchain Research Initiative uh, and uh, in 2018 they created that. Initially there were 11 universities um, or 14 universities, and Morgan became the 15th or 16th university in that system, in that network. Um, but later we, we expanded our mission uh, to serve all other HBCUs. So we became um, an Ubri within Ubri, um, so to speak. It, it's a network within a network. And uh, uh, these universities that you see in here are the, the best uh, from around the world. Uh, Delft, uh, uh, Cornell, and Carnegie Mellon, Australian National University, uh, Duke, uh, UC Berkeley, and so on and so forth. All of these are part of, part of the Ripple network. So what we did uh, for the HBCU community, we created a network um, of sort, 
uh, and uh, we identified people from all of these universities. Um, uh, currently, the list is, I think, 61 or 62. And uh, we tried to do the, uh, the educational uh, programming that would uh, include workshops, um, webinars, uh, uh, course development, and, uh, and all uh, effort was, was uh, really spent on, on uh, broadening the bandwidth and the building capacity at, uh, at these universities. Our ultimate goal is that we have uh, uh, student engagement uh, and uh, teach, the, um, teach the faculty to, uh, to be able to, to go into the classroom and, and uh, introduce new topics. So we started with a, with a humble uh, small group of uh, 20 faculty and then it expanded within a few months. It expanded to a larger number. And uh, in 2018, we had uh, a summit. And in 2019, we had another one. And uh, gradually, 35 universities joined us. And uh, so the concept of train the trainer was important for us from the beginning. We wanted to make sure that the faculty have the technical understanding of what blockchain is, what crypto is, uh, what is tokenization, all, all of these uh, new concepts uh, that the faculty didn't really know and uh, hadn't heard before, whether they were teaching computer science or finance or any of the other areas, we brought them together and uh, we exposed them to these ideas and, and uh, subjects. So <clears throat> we did um, uh, a workshop, uh, we called it the Faculty Institute in New Orleans in 2019. And uh, through a competitive process, we selected 45 uh, faculty from 30 universities. They came to New Orleans um, and uh, over three days, they, they got together in small groups uh, they brought their laptops. They, uh, we were in high regency hotel uh, in a huge conference room, ballroom, and we just worked. Uh, they, they worked and developed their syllabi. When they left, they had notes and videos and everything they needed in order to go and teach the courses on their campuses. So the impact was huge uh, because 45 faculty go to 30 different universities and teach thousands of students eventually. That was a huge uh, um, uh, impact. We can't do all of these things alone. We have to work with the industry in order to, to accomplish our goals. From the start, uh, uh, we've had uh, the, the good fortune of uh, working with David um, Boswell and uh, Hyperledger Foundation. Uh, they, they were really partners from the beginning in, in uh, reaching out to all of these HBCUs. They, they offered us. Uh, I got uh, this email from David one day <laughs> that said, oh, uh, can we have a talk? <laughs> they found us. And uh, and uh, they said, well, can you uh, tell us what you're doing? And we, we searched, and we couldn't find any other HBCU. We want to get involved with the, um, with your, with the community. And uh, the rest is history. We just uh, methodically, we worked on programming. And uh, we did so many different things. And it, again, the, the goal is to develop students as our future workforce. Where do you find uh, talent? Where do you find uh, the students that understand these technologies? Uh, at, again, at HBCUs, we thought that that was our role and that was our, our goal. Uh, with uh, David's help and uh, Ry Jones um, and Sean, programs were developed. Uh, we, we offered an actual 
um, NFT development workshop. And David reached out to some, uh, uh, some of the uh, community members and Chainyard, Mohan from Chainyard uh, came uh, and brought in a number of uh, uh, programs, uh, programmers from their, uh, uh, their company. And we developed this uh, uh, excellent workshop that uh, you know, the faculty took to their uh, computer science classes and they actually taught the courses uh, using those modules. Um, we're doing um, data analytics uh, workshops. We're doing, um, we actually are in the middle of a three-part uh, workshop on metaverse. Demystifying metaverse is something that we're working on right now and uh, several hundred students <laughs> have, have registered for these. Um, so we do, um, you know, all of these things. Uh, the areas that we cover are um, really uh, a large number of uh, uh, participants. Um, we try to uh, to um, to engage. Uh, we have, um, as a pandemic uh, forced us to go virtual, we had two uh, national conferences where we brought in faculty and students to present and, and discuss uh, research papers, projects that they were doing on their campuses. And uh, this um, November, November 6 to 8, we're going to be in uh, Orlando for an in-person uh, conference. And uh, again, this is, this is the type of thing that we, we believe um, would uh, inform and educate uh, the, uh, the community that we're trying to serve. Um, we, as part of our activities, we're doing a national resume data bank, and these uh, companies are interested in, in recruiting. So we said, let's create this database, bring in uh, the, uh, the companies that um, are interested in recruiting these students, bring them to Florida, they can meet and they can uh, hopefully start a discussion and uh, get internships and get jobs, uh, job offers. <coughs> um, so we've had uh, different types of workshops and I mentioned it again. When we want to train our uh, students and, and uh, the future workforce, you, you want them to be knowledgeable in all of these areas, understand, so that when they join your company, your team, uh, they're not novices, they don't, uh, that they have never heard of these, uh, these concepts. Uh, some of them can be developers, some can help with the uh, marketing activities, some can help with um, other, <coughs> um, and bring other valuable um, dimensions to the company. Um, we also helped uh, student clubs, uh, blockchain club at Morgan, we had the first one, and then the students actually helped um, create other clubs at other universities. So uh, all, through all of these activities, the students are the driving force for us. They, um, they come to us with ideas, we try to help implement those ideas, and we try to, uh, to, uh, to make them uh, succeed. Um, another thing that we, we've done is um, we've also uh, use some of the funding that we have from Ripple and we fund projects. They range from $5,000 um, to 10000 uh, for uh, papers, research papers, um, research projects that take several months and uh, the researchers, which are the faculty and graduate students at the, at the uh, universities, they may uh, use this fund to buy um, software or do uh, recruit uh, a couple of students to do work for them or do whatever they have 
uh, to do in order to, to accomplish their goals. Uh, research projects that have pub ultimately published uh, in, in top journals like IEEE, uh, ACM, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, Journal of Finance and some of the others uh, are really, we're proud of having a role in that. And uh, uh, the, the other um, uh, aspect is, again, because of the pandemic, we couldn't go to um, many places. We, we were limited. So we decided to fund different uh, campuses to do their own innovative projects how to educate the students and faculty and how to expand this uh, understanding of uh, blockchain and fintech on their campuses. So we funded innovative projects that were uh, proposed to us and uh, over the past uh, two or three years we've funded 23 research uh, projects and 25 um, innovative uh, campus-wide uh, projects. Another interesting thing for us was if, if our students go into the crypto industry, they needed to understand the crypto market and how to create uh, wallets and how to uh, use exchanges. So in 29, 2019, I met uh, uh, Catherine Coley back then. She was the CEO of uh, Binance US, and uh, I proposed uh, that we could um, we should have a, uh, a competition uh, using uh, Binance US uh, as the exchange, and uh, Binance US would fund the students' wallets, and they can they can compete. They give them a couple of months, so with real money, uh, students actually competed over two, uh, two months, and uh, they came up with some prizes, first, second, third prizes, and uh, it was a fantastic opportunity. Uh, our students uh, performed really well. Um, initially, we, we ran this twice. Initially, 50 students from uh, uh, 10 HBCUs participated. Uh, because Binance US at that point didn't have a whole lot of uh, uh, mm -hmm. presence at all, all different states. So um, we were limited on that um, regard. But later on, in the following semester, we had a larger engagement. And in two days, the registration really closed because we, Binance had set the limit 100, no more than 100. Uh, um, wallets that they can create. And then they did all the due diligence, um, KYC, AML, all of that, to get the students their wallets. And uh, the CEO even, uh, Catherine Coley, uh, who's no longer the CEO, but she actually came and, and uh, taught a few workshops uh, because the goal is that these are all experiential learning activities for our students. And uh, she taught portfolio management, how to create portfolios using uh, crypto. And what are the different techniques uh, to keep, hold, sell. Uh, all of that, it was, it was extremely uh, rewarding to see. But anyway, these are all, all examples that I, I presented in here. My goal is um, that um, we need to um, have this understanding that it is possible to have a diverse workforce. The willpower has to be there. Uh, planning has to be there. Uh, it has to be uh, company-wise. It has to be uh, uh, thought uh, through carefully. Uh, appropriate people need to be assigned so that they can, they can do the work. Uh, mentors and sponsors can be identified. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, there are some success stories. Um, some of the insurance companies are doing this. Uh, uh, some of the fintech companies, um, crypto companies, 
are good examples. They have a unit that is dedicated uh, to ensuring that uh, whoever they recruit from the minority community is going to succeed uh, because uh, uh, their goal is to, uh, to expand diversity on their company. Uh, and a, an interesting thing that I found was also during this uh, uh, research that, that companies, the startups, if they succeed and if they're uh, uh, in the mode to recruit, they're more likely to recruit minorities than large uh, established companies with thousands of employees. Okay, so uh, the uh, the data that I presented here is, uh, you know, not not the best that I could uh, consider. Um, uh, because it's not, you know, you go from one source, you find something, and then you find another source, and they all uh, have nuances and differences. Uh, but there's, there's definitely a need for uh, some um, um, consistent data and uh, surveys that need to be done. Anyway, this was my uh, presentation. I don't have um, any additional uh, slides to share with you, but I'm happy to answer any questions, um, hear your comments. Yes? Yeah, my question deals with uh, recruitment. Uh, you have, you mentioned the, the Ripple Network that you have, so are there any active marketing efforts to attract students either to uh, Morgan State or to any of the other um, members of the Ripple Network? Um, well, we, we actively recruit at Morgan. We, we, that, that's, uh, that's something that we are uh, actively doing. Uh, Ripple itself has reached out to us many times and opened uh, the uh, and offered positions. Uh, there are uh, other universities that are doing the same thing. The awareness is there, but it needs consistent planning. It needs uh, uh, persistent uh, implementation and. Uh, you know, sometimes the, uh, the company goes through periods of uh, growth and they want to recruit. Sometimes they don't have that uh, and they lay off a lot of people. <clears throat> and when you approach them and you ask them for any, uh, any opportunity for our students to intern, or they say, no, we're, we're in, a, uh, in a period of... Uh, uh, slow growth right now. We can't hire any more than maybe one or two. Right now is is uh, a good example. The crypto market is down, and uh, every time I hear, every time uh, I talk with anyone uh, from these companies, they all say the same thing. It's just they're reading from the same uh, script, um, give you the same answer. But overall, in the past. Uh, I've seen dozens uh, of companies that come to the university and uh, try to recruit. Uh, is it enough? No, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think uh, uh, the, the, the market uh, can absorb a lot more, and, uh, but uh, the companies need to do a lot more also to reach out. Uh, if you go and just any Silicon Valley company, uh, right now, if you look at the, uh, the, the, the landscape and the diversity uh, of uh, the technical staff they have, uh, you may be a, a, a black program and maybe just one in 30 or 40 in, uh, in the room. Uh, so it, it, is, uh, it is a problem. Uh, 
Some universities are making uh, some inroads, uh, but it's, uh, it's a slow uh, uh, process. Yes? Mm -hmm. And who is that coming from? Because the reason why I'm asking the question is, um, I live in Detroit, and we know that there is an HBCU that's in Detroit, and then a couple of the uh, net, uh, Ripple Network universities with the University of Michigan and Michigan State are there. You already have the population. They just don't have the awareness of the program or mm -hmm. the student ambassador. So my question is, in terms of the next step, if I'm going to take information back home, I need to know where to send them. Mm -hmm. next, uh, next week I'll be in London at Ubri Connect. Uh, it's annual conference of all these universities that I showed you as part of the uh, Ripple Network. Uh, every year they get together and they present uh, papers and discuss uh, ways and, and one of the areas is workforce development that I'm, be, uh, I'm, I'm addressing and this is the first time, the first year they had such a, a session planned. Uh, so uh, I think the information, you're right, the information needs to be shared with them. People need to understand. And, uh, and I, again, I, I've seen more willingness on the part of Ripple uh, as uh, years came. Uh, I, I noticed that Ripple is reaching out more and more for uh, diverse talent. Um, and uh, they go to HBCUs, they come to Morgan. We broadcast it to all HBCUs. Any position that opens at Ripple or any other fintech company, we post it on our website and we reach out to our champions at all these HBCUs to broadcast it to their students. Because for us, the success of our students is our success as well. Uh, the more uh, they, uh, they find jobs and internships, the better for uh, the HBCUs and also better for the company. So uh, I, I consider it a win-win. Yes. <clears throat> yes, uh, they, actually, the, uh, you know, it's, crypto is only one, one uh, small uh, part of it, uh, but there is uh, the DeFi, uh, the payment systems, the DeFi, in, uh, and uh, alt finance actually is another huge area that we have, uh, we have a lot of engagement. Uh, so it's not all crypto. Um, and uh, the diversity of all these companies that uh, the, the startups uh, is uh, an indication that uh, the the fintech market is so uh, so widespread and so um, diverse that it can accept uh, a lot of newcomers, a lot of entry level positions. Although uh, the startups don't have a whole lot of need for entry-level positions. They need experienced uh, uh, workers, experienced programmers, developers to help them grow their company. But once they get uh, uh, to the, to the uh, a little bit level of uh, maturity, they, 
they tend to a higher, uh, uh, more diverse population. And we've seen also in the fintech industry, we've seen that uh, the uh, minority community is, is more active. They tend to go to the fintech uh, lenders, uh, neobanks, and some of the others, and uh, get involvement in, in, in that sense uh, compared to to the tra traditional banking system that have uh, shown a lot of uh, biases and, and algorithmic uh, kind of um, uh, biases that existed and, and still exist. Uh, so, so I think uh, uh, the, the fintech industry can accept and absorb a lot more than just uh, at a sliver of uh, the market, which is uh, in the crypto. Yeah, if you, if you go to our website, uh, uh, fintech.morgan.edu, uh, you find a lot of information. But as a matter of fact, if you forget, just type the Fintech Center. Because we receive so much uh, request for information that uh, the Fintech Center pops up uh, on your Google search right away. Um, we have... Uh, uh, we have articles, um, and also if you don't find something that you need and you want to get information, <clears throat> uh, if you write to us, uh, we share different uh, Google Docs um, or Google Drive uh, URLs with you that would give you tons of information, articles, uh, videos, uh, all of the workshops that we've done, the videos are available also that we share with, uh, uh, with our colleagues, whether HBCU or non-HBCU. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your interest. See you. Uh,